Okay, so you've got really two things contributing to the flavor and aroma of your of your products, your oils. Okay, it's either the stuff that's coming in as a varietal component. You know, it's a part of the oil seed. You know, sunflowers smell like sunflowers because they've got compounds there that are native to the organism. They, you know, that's how they smell. So that's part of it. And then you've got changes that happen as a result of what I mentioned: you know, hydrolysis, hydrolytic rancidity and uh, oxidation, okay? So it's kind of tricky to tease those things apart, especially in a, on a complicated matrix like this, where you've got a very aromatic. In the refined products, it's probably a lot easier to, to pull out um, rancidity. But in something like this, it's a bit trickier. So let me just talk about some ways that you can measure these things in your own shop, okay? And these things range in uh, cost and expertise needed, all that stuff. All right, so hydrolysis. So remember, this is what we're really talking about, at least for non-fryer oil, is lipase activity. We're talking about enzymatic degradation, making these long fatty acids that taste kind of soupy. Uh, soapy. Um, the, a really good way to measure that is by measuring just acidity, okay, because these things are acid. You can measure these things by simple titration. So this is a probably a $30, $40 setup. You've got a burette here that can, um, can meter in your titrate, your sodium hydroxide. You've got an indicator, phenolphthalein, um, some kind of pH indicator, um, and that's it. You've got to deal with storing sodium hydroxide, um, which is kind of dangerous if you're splashing it over your face or whatever, but it's a you know, pretty simple thing, and you know, high school students in chemistry class do this all the time. So. That's one way of doing it. Um, if you got a lot of samples and you don't want to deal with this one by one, you know, often you've got to repeat this and triplicate, you can get an auto titrator, something that does this for you. Um, so whereas this costs maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks to set up, this is 8,000, 9,000 bucks. So more money. Um, this is a nice one. They have ones that are not so nice, but those are still pretty expensive. Um, and then there's these things that actually I haven't started playing around with, and I just someone told me about them. Uh, they use these in the food industry all the time um, to monitor the stability and the, um, the shelf life, the, the quality of fryer oil, shortenings and, and fry oil. Okay, so it's a test strip, and you can see them here, what they look like. Um, I'm gonna pass it around. It's a 3M product. Um, if you've got a pH meter. You can't measure this acidity. Um, you have to do a, a titration. I mean, but what if you've got a pH meter with you in, in your shop? There, you can use that instead of an indicator to measure the endpoint. Um, okay, so these test strips. Um, what we've got here is actually a low-range version of this. It, it can, in theory, tell you uh, not really quantitatively, but it can tell you if you are above either one percent, one and a half, two, and two and a half percent. Acidity, okay, and that's even one percent is a little bit high for canola, I think. Uh, but if you've got a real problem, you should be able to determine this with this test strip. So, you know, you, you take this, you stick it in your oil, and if you've got a color change on the first strip, you've got over one percent acidity, and you probably have an issue with enzyme with lipase activity. Did I pick up brain so that I think we that much is Uh, will it actually make you sick? Um, this kind of product, these these free fatty acids, uh, you know, yeah, in very high levels it can make you sick. Um, when they're very short chain, they smell horrible. So the ones that we're talking about are actually so big that you can't smell them. They don't volatilize. They don't partition the headspace. You can taste them on your tongue, but you can't smell them. When, when you've got very small ones, four carbon, six carbon ones, uh, one of these is butyric acid. Butyric acid is what baby vomit smells like. So it literally is the same stuff. So you smell that and you just, uh, you got to think about why humans are programmed like that. It's to avoid foods like that. So, um, so yeah, I, I like to try these test strips um, maybe in some of our oils at some point. I just got these, but uh, that's, I think, 30 bucks for 40 strips, something like that. It, it could work. There's no titration. You dip in the oil, you wait five minutes, and you see if there's a color change. 
So it's sort of plus minus. I mean, it is sort of semi-quantitative. It tells you if you're within the range of one to two and a half percent. Um, this will tell you an actual, you know, a real value. You're at 0.083 percent, whatever. Um, or you can taste it. And if you train yourself to taste what this tastes like, you've got a pretty good instrument. I think the, the human olfaction system is pretty good at detecting this stuff. If you can detect this, if you taste it, and if you train yourself to taste what soapy and hydrolytic rancidity tastes like, you've got a very good sensor. That's way more sensitive than than these guys, all these guys, and cost nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, any kind of um, any kind of oil where you've got active enzyme is going to be susceptible. So really, it's, it's well, actually, I should, yeah, take that back. Uh, dairy fat is very susceptible to this, just because the very short chain fatty acids make it easier for the enzyme to work. So actually, in dairy products, you want a bit of this. I mean, cheese flavor is really hydrolysis, these kind of things. Yes. All right, so same with oxidative rancidity, too. So you've got a range of things you can try, although even at the low end, it's really um, um, kind of a pain. You can do a titration as well. So as, as lipids, as oils like canola start going rancid, oxidatively rancid, they start throwing off, they start converting themselves to peroxides. So there's a pretty simple peroxide analysis that you can do by titration. It's a standard method that people use all over the world. Um, so, you know, if you, you could buy one setup for both. You could buy a cuvette, uh, a burette, you could buy indicator, you could buy some hydroxide, and you can train yourself to be good. I mean, there's some technique involved to do this right, and it kind of is a pain, but, um, you know, it's cheap. Um, if you want to get a bit fancier, you can buy, you can do this with a spec, a spectrometer, uh, a visible or UV vis spectrometer. There are pretty simple versions of these. This is one that's used for like, um, high school teaching labs. You know, about a thousand bucks, maybe half that, uh, I don't know for sure, but pretty cheap, up to something that's maybe seven thousand bucks. Okay. Um, actually, this one, I just got quoted, this is from Hanna Instruments, they make a lot of handheld stuff. Um, this was quoted at 600 bucks, uh, so pretty cheap. But um, you need to buy some reagents that are proprietary. It's you know it adds up. Okay, Chris, do you have a question? If folks are set up to do biodiesel titration, the only difference here is peroxide versus a peroxide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so this is you know. Uh, 30 bucks to 7,000 bucks and stuff in between. Here's the $120,000 option. <laughs> Actually, this is what I have in my lab. So we, we have to know, we, we do this uh, all the time because we need to know specifically how much we have of, of different types. So um, this is how, but I don't think anyone wants to buy one of these. Um, or you can train your, your, yourself to detect it with your mouth and your nose, okay? Um, so some of these oxidation products are, are not volatile. You can only taste them with your tongue. That's fine. You can learn how to do that. Um, the ones that you really care about, I think, are the ones that stink. The things that smell kind of fishy or metallic or, or whatever. Um, if you can smell these things, train yourself to know what they are, what they mean, um, you're in good shape. And you've got a, a sensor in your nose that's an order of magnitude more sensitive than this. And again, it's free. So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, at the, this is the last couple slides here. Uh, this is a, a standard ASTM method for evaluation for the sensory, means human sensory, evaluation of oils, oil quality. Uh, and this is a standard written for refined oils. So this is, there's no such standard for unrefined oils. Okay, but oxidation is oxidation. doesn't matter if it's refined or unrefined. It's just that in the refined system, the sort of the background noise is a lot higher because you've got all these volatiles there that are going to mask things. Okay, but um, this um, you know standard method you can buy this method um, it tells you exactly what you need to do. I mean it's it's very clear, systematic. You need a vial that's this big with an opening that's this big, and these are all the different descriptors 
that you'd find in all these different oils. Okay, so from corn to, you know, what else we have here? Canola. Um, soybean oil, sunflower oil, all these things here. So let's focus on canola. Um, and then these are some of the sensory attributes of canola that are sort of accepted in the industry. Uh, beany, buttery, fishy, grassy, lots of different things here. And it's tough to really, um, it's, it's tough to even conceptualize this without having a standard. So what's, what people do often is, is make standards to sort of train their systems to be able to identify these things. Um, in the case of a beanie, okay, in the context of canola oil, this is a marker for a bad oil deterioration. Okay? Um, and if you can smell this in your oil, you know that there's a problem that you need to address. Okay? And in order to train yourself on that beanie flavor, I mean, you can think about what beanie smells like or what that is. It's better to actually have a standard where you can train yourself. That's how people do it. Um, so to do this, the official method is to get some lima beans and grind them up and put them in water, put it in this vial, and that's what you—that's your standard for that. Um, buttery is also a, a common sensory attribute of canola. Uh, does not indicate um, anything bad. Actually, it indicates something that's uh, a very freshly pressed oil. Okay, so you wouldn't find this in a refined oil. Um, you'll often find this, and I, I definitely smell this in a very freshly processed unrefined canola oil, okay? Um, yeah, we actually, we prepared all these standards. So you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, this, these are the official vials uh, for, this, for this standard, okay? Um, so the way you do this, it's actually outlined in this procedure. And again, if you want to do this, contact me. But it's some training, it's just like anything else. Um, you need to have your oil there, and then you've got these reference standards, and you sort of go back and forth. Okay, you open up the vial, you want to smell it, then cap the vial. Some of these are a little bit tricky, you know, and some people are actually what's called anosmic to it. Some, you know, just because we're all genetically a little bit different, some people are just blind to some of these aromas. Um, so if you're the only person doing this kind of analysis in your, in your shop, your, your organization, or whatever, uh, that's probably not a good idea, especially if you're a smoker. You, you probably want to have a couple people doing this 